Hi, and welcome back to Joe's DIY, back again with another video. So, as promised, today I have a, a new DIY project that I'm going to do. Uh, this is actually in relation to a video, a very old video that I made, uh, must, must be going on seven years ago. Um, I was doing the project where I was modifying a Telecaster kit uh, that I ordered online, and the guitar did get completed, and I did do the modifications mainly the the routing for humbuckers and so forth uh, but this time around um, I do remember that I was getting a lot of comments on my video on that particular video mentioning that they felt kind of gypped because I wasn't able to show the actual routing and how I did it so I thought that being that I've been interested in modifying another guitar uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know show you how I routed you know what templates I use and so forth and the patient will be this uh, Epiphone uh, Junior SG. Um, and I know what many of you are probably thinking, you know, why modify a guitar that's meant to have only one pickup? Uh, well, I, I don't particularly care for Juniors uh, because of that same reason. It only has one bridge pickup, and I like my guitars to have two pickups so, so that I can get different tones out of it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the middle pickup right here this one right here and uh you know we're going to go through the whole uh modification i'm also going to create a new pick card because believe it or not uh you know pick cards for an sg junior are really difficult to find online i haven't been able to find any on ebay so i'm going to make a new pick card so that's also going to be part of the project and uh we are going to have you see me do all this stuff uh, down to the routing down to the making of the pick card and so forth so this video, I hope, uh, makes up for me not being able to show the routing when I did that Telecaster many years ago. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go ahead and just start talking about some of the parts that I'm going to be using for this project. Um, I got a, a new pick guard uh, materials so that I can uh, basically replicate the pick guard and uh, make a new one. Um, I don't want to damage the original one because I might want to go back and uh, add uh, the pick guard back again and basically make it stock again. So uh, I'm making a brand new pick guard for this project. Next, we have the orange drop capacitors that I ordered. And we have a new uh, toggle switch for the two new pickups. And I also have new pots. These are uh, 250K pots. And I will also be using this template uh, to route the uh, P90. And this is this is basically the same company, Cache or Cache. Um, I'm not going to be talking too much about the tools because you're going to be walking through the process with me so you'll be able to see some of the tools that I use. Uh, but the next stop is to go ahead and take apart the guitar and then we'll go ahead and start figuring out how we're going to do our measurements. So before I start hacking into this uh, SG, I'm going to go ahead and test it out without the neck pickup just as it is right now just so we can get a good understanding of what it sounds like just with that uh, bridge pickup.
Okay, so now we can go ahead and start the, this assembly. We'll start with the uh, the strings. I'm, I got my uh, uh, painter's tape here and my tuner winder. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these uh, strings off and I will use the tape just to tape them up so that they don't flop around all over the place. Um, these strings tend to get tangled very easily, so that's just a way for me to make sure that they don't uh, flop all over the place. So uh, I tried to spare you the tedious task of watching me uh, remove the strings from this uh, guitar, but uh, here we go. And uh, this has worked really well so that the strings don't go all over the place. Obviously, this bridge is very easy to remove. You just have to pull out, pull it out, and put the strings and the bridge uh, somewhere where it won't get uh, bent. Okay, so I went ahead and took off the pick guard, and to my surprise, I can see that the neck tenon uh, of the guitar neck is way deep into the body. And as a matter of fact, I really am limited at how low I can put that neck pickup. Um, obviously it cannot be anywhere near the neck tenon because uh, that would you know give me trouble uh, when removing the the neck if I wanted to do that so it's gonna go right underneath the the neck tenon um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to mark uh, where my space is gonna be I went ahead and I know I didn't show this but I went ahead and reattached the E strings the low and the high just so that I can get um, the correct uh, string alignment on the pickup and I just got the pickup cover of the P90 and I tried to center it as close to the middle as I could so that we can get full contact on that low E and high E so that should be about right I'm gonna go ahead and get the ruler here and I measured uh, both sides and we came up with seven centimeters uh, to both sides so that is going to be the spacing between the neck and the bridge pickup so I'm just go, going ahead and marking it down with a pencil, as you can see there. Uh, and I'm not too worried about leaving marks on the finish because I'm going to go ahead and polish it and remove all that pencil that I used. Um, so here comes our first problem. Um, the neck, the pickup cover for the neck is way too high for the string action, and as a matter of fact. Um, I've already tried to raise the bridge and that did not help very much because now I have extremely high action. So the next move is going to be figuring out how I can uh, raise the action uh, in the neck pocket. And the only way you could probably do that is by adding a shim. So we are going to go ahead and remove the neck and add a shim. So for now I'm just going to use this washer. I know it's not the best way to raise the neck, but uh, I don't have any shims right now, so I'm going to use that just as a temporary way to raise the neck angle just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, reattach the neck now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just speed up through this process so that you don't have to watch me, uh, you know, re-screw the neck, uh, screws into the, the neck. Okay, so that definitely improved the uh, the angle of the neck, and it also you know allowed me to adjust the action a little bit more, uh, so that I can uh, you know have a little bit more uh, room for that neck pickup. So let me go ahead and make some more adjustments. Okay, so we're back, and I have basically given up on using uh, this pickup on this neck. Um, it's just not going to work. Um, there's enough clearance when the strings are open, but unfortunately, if I try to uh, fret at the higher frets, um, you definitely get the pickup cover hitting that that, that high and low string. So uh, there's no way that I can possibly use uh, this pickup, you know, unless I was willing to take off the cover, uh, but that's just not gonna look right. And so after some careful consideration, I've decided that we're, we're gonna go ahead and use a different pickup for that neck position. Uh, I went on Amazon and I found a Wilkinson's uh, Sopar uh, P90 um, that will uh, fit the template that I have. And 
that will be a lot better than this because I can go ahead and when I make the adjustment for the, that pickup, we can make sure that the pickup goes into the body since there's, there'll be a cavity there that where we can lower it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just not use this pickup. You know, yeah, I even took the cover off trying to see if I can, you know, use it without the cover, but there's no way it's gonna look right. And, uh, you know, if I'm gonna go ahead and make a conversion, I might as well just use a real uh, Sobar P90. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're back. And uh, after a couple of days, I was able to get uh, the shims along with a new uh, p90 it's and th those are going to be for the net pocket um the, the m series is the same type of pickup that's in the bridge already uh but this one happens to be in the uh, soap bar uh, style so let's go ahead and open it up here wilkinson's always gives you pretty nice packaging there gives you a nice little uh diagram explaining to you uh what the cables mean and uh, our pickup uh, is red, so they could, you know, our wire, sorry, is red, so the, it's gonna be the neck pickup. They gave us some nice screws to uh, mount it onto the body and adjust the height. And here's the P90. Uh, and again, this is the M series, so it's just like the, the bridge that I have on there, uh, but this is in the soap bar style. And just for comparison, uh, you can see that the the dog ear P90 is a lot uh, bigger. Um, if, if we put it one on top of the other, you can see that um, it's the dog ear P90 is a bit wider. Um, but that is not going to be a problem for this project because um, we are going to use the template, and the template is exactly the size of that uh, soap bar P90, so it won't be a problem at all. So as I slip the template back in, um, I want to make sure that I can make sure that the soap bar P90 lines up correctly with the strings. Uh, we have those two uh, out, outer screws that we wanna make sure that they line up with those uh, E strings. So um, I started marking down the template and I just realized that I should probably move the pickup. Now that the pickup is a, lot, a little bit smaller, it'd probably be better to uh, move it closer to the neck pocket um, just because I can since that pickup is gonna be a, a lot less wider than the dog ear. So um, I didn't do that here, but I, I went back and I did it because uh, I wanted to take advantage of that uh, in order to move that P90 as close to the neck as possible. At this point, I had already gone and taken off the strings and as you can briefly see there, I had moved up the line that I had made with the template. Now it's just about taking off the neck and disassembling this a little bit more so that we can have enough room to uh, put the tape and also, uh, you know, make sure that everything lines up one, one last time with the ruler. So uh, here I'm just trying out those new shims. Um, just wanted to see if they fit well and if it actually fits perfect. Um, so I was kind of happy about that. Here I'm pulling out the painter's tape. Um, this stuff will help you uh, make sure that that line is nice and straight. Uh, sometimes, you know, your palm gets on the lines or whatnot that you drew with the pencil, they're going to start fading away. So it's just an easier way to see uh, where you're supposed to be cutting. And here I'm measuring against the, uh, the P90, but that one is definitely not going to be a lot of help. So in a moment there, I, I go ahead and just remove the, the bridge pickup. So it's off to taking off the back plate so that we can expose the uh, wires so I can remove that uh, middle pickup and just, you know, just snipping them off I'll clean it up later and that right there can give me a better idea of uh, how to make sure that my uh, routes are straight I soon come to find out that uh, that bridge route was not going to be very helpful uh, unfortunately it uh, looks like Epiphone did not bother to route this very straight um, so the bridge pickup is a little bit crooked. So, um, luckily I did make sure that that, uh, template was, um, uh, lined up with the way I, I lined up the, the, the outer screws of the pickup. So I'm pretty confident that my middle route or my middle pickup route is going to be pretty straight compared to the bridge pickup. 
Um, not that it matters very much because I did notice that um, the 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 P90 is gonna drop into that cavity in the bridge, and the alignment will work if I can adjust it, or if it was adjusted correctly uh, out of the factory. So that's not our big deal. Um, so basically, I'm I'm more concerned with making sure that my work is straight because uh, that so part P90 is gonna be sunken into that cavity. So it better be straight. Here I just took a brief moment to just show how that Solpar P90 would fit if we were to put it in the bridge position. Um, and I mean, you can see that the route is not exactly straight, but it's kind of hidden with the, that dog ear P90 uh, cover. So, but that is basically how that pickup would look if we, we, didn't, we weren't using the, the dog ear. Um, here, um, I have everything already set up, basically ready for me to start drilling into that uh, middle cavity. Uh, here I have the bit that I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill into the body with that and I'm going to make a, a hole that's about uh, one inch deep. So I don't particularly have a fancy drill press. Uh, this is quite a small drill press that I bought at Harbor Freight. Um, as you can see I have the bit uh, masked off with the, some tape kind of letting me know how deep uh, one inch is and uh, here I'm just drilling away uh, nothing uh, spectacular here to watch but uh, you can see that um, when I'm done here uh, removing most of that uh, wood or that material it's gonna make the routing process a whole lot easier because you're not pushing so hard into your template uh, so here I, I guess I save a lot of work for my router um, I'm using a trim router and again, it's another one that I bought at Harbor Freight. So, you know, it's not like a super powerful trim router that I have. So the more material I can remove with this, uh, the easier it's gonna be on my other tool. So here, I'm just carrying away, making sure that I make, make the hole deep enough. Also making sure to stay inside the tape. So unfortunately, uh, my camera died in, the, in my process of trying to drill out the rest of the material. But as you can see, the cavity is pretty much cleaned up. The only thing left to do is to get take my trim router and go uh, through the cavity and clean up the rest of the material. I already double-sided taped my uh, template, and um, it's gonna go ahead and uh, you know line up exactly where the tape is. And we're gonna take the router and just go around the edges to make sure that we can clean the rest of it. Needless to say, um, you should always wear safety safety goggles and, and such when you're operating a, a router. Um, personally, I'm just wearing my safety goggles and also wearing uh, something to cover my nose and my mouth so that I don't, in, you know, breathe in all that all this sawdust and I'm about, I'm about to uh, dust up, I guess. So uh, here's a good look at the router. And, uh, you know, when, when you're routing, you know, you wanna go slow. Um, you definitely wanna, you know, keep Keep uh, your eyes open for burnout. Uh, sometimes if you're not operating the router correctly, uh, you might get some burnout. So it's important to make sure that uh, you are you are you know looking out for things like that. Um, because I had made so many uh, holes into the cavity already and removed a lot of the material, it was very easy to just kind of round out the edges and make sure that everything uh, was coming out smooth and straight. So, I mean, it wasn't a very difficult job to do. Uh, usually routing is probably, you know, it's hard if, you know, you're using something that doesn't have a lot of power or, you know, uh, it's a deep cut. But like I said, you know, remove all the material and you should be fine. It should be a big help. Um, so I'm just cleaning up the edges here and uh, just kind of switching around just to make sure that I have everything uh, nice and clean and just you know gently going over the the cavity making sure that everything is nice and smooth and yeah worked out perfect so there's a good look at the cavity once I routed it out and unfortunately I did have a little little bit of chip out right here um, but overall, what didn't come out too bad. I'm not too worried about it because we are going to use a pick guard to cover most of the cavity up. Um, and it fits perfectly. I just inserted the pickup just to kind of make sure that that is looking correct. And uh, 
the next step will be to make a hole uh, from that cavity over to the bridge cavity. That way we can uh, route the, the, the pickup cables uh, through uh, the second cavity and into the uh, control cavity. So I'm just kind of marking the hole right here with a pencil. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick it up with the camera. And um, we are going to go ahead and drill through that. So I got an extra long uh, drill bit and I'm going to drill right through the neck pocket and into my new cavity and into the uh, bridge cavity. And that, that should give me the, the route that I need. So I just make sure that I'm I'm making sure that I'm going gent slow because that is a very thin piece of wood right by the pocket. So I just want to go gently, not too much pressure. And then I make the hole and then I make my second hole and I try to go as straight as I can so that I go right into that bridge cavity. So there it goes. Okay. And that worked, worked out perfectly well. That'll help me get the cable uh, from the neck pickup over to the bridge cavity. Perfect. So now that I have uh, that uh, squared away, I'm going to go ahead and start working on shielding that new cavity. I got my uh, shielding paint, uh, or it's conductive actually, and I'm just spreading it right through that cavity. Uh, I masked it off just to make sure that I wouldn't get paint everywhere, make a big mess. Uh, but it's looking okay um just want to make sure that i you know put enough coats on there and that it's shield it's shielded so that way i get i can uh, avoid getting a lot of uh, interference uh or humming so so well i let that uh, shielding paint sit there and dry up i started uh disassembling uh the electronics i'm just pulling out the old pots there just getting them out um these shipped out with uh, those, you know, mini pots uh, that I really don't like that much. I mean, I like, I'm pretty sure everyone likes full-size pots. And I got a pair of, of Kaish uh, 250K pots that I'm going to put in uh, momentarily. But as I do my clipping, uh, I unexpectedly find uh, something unpleasant which I'll get into right here. So as I'm inserting these new pots, I found out that the shaft is too short. Um, I tried very hard to try to get it to work, uh, but the only uh, way I could get this to work would be to uh, somehow uh, cut around the wood that's near the pot. And I really don't want to do that because I don't want to make that, that part of the wood uh, extra weak. So I think what I ended up doing is I just ended up uh, Ordering pots with a, a longer shaft. So in the meantime, I just decided to start working on mounting that neck pickup when, once the paint dried. Um, so it was it's pretty easy to, to mount a P90, the, a Sopar P90, just because you could just uh, screw them right into the body. Um, there were some springs that came in with the pickup, but they really didn't work for me. So uh, I ended up using a different type of uh, spring and that ended up working a lot better because I think the, the springs that came with that pickup were just too too long. So uh, I either had the choice of clipping them or finding a different set of, uh, of uh, springs. So that worked out better. So here I'm just making sure that uh, they're going in all the way. And uh, yeah wasn't too complicated at all so here I'm just kind of adjusting a few more things uh, putting the dog dog ear p90 right back into the body uh, just kind of wanted to get a, a mental picture of how it looks and I'm pretty satisfied with the result um, pretty much what we have left here and there's just mocking up the neck I haven't screwed it in but it looks good uh, to me so far uh, I think the next step is to figure out how I'm going to shape the pick guard and wait on those parts to come in. So hopefully we get those in soon. Uh, that way we can uh, wrap this project up. But I'm very happy with uh, the results so far. So here I'm starting to uh, shape the uh, all important pick guard. Um, this design was kind of a mix of half a junior, half uh, a P9, uh, a SG with two P90s. 
I kind of took the design. Uh, I borrowed the design from from both of them. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to keep uh, that design um, just because of the way that I cut the middle, and we'll get more into that later. Um, here, I have my bandsaw, and I'm just cutting through the uh, the pick guard material. You know, pretty straightforward. Um, you kind of want to uh, stay as straight as possible when you're uh, moving the material around. Uh, it's very difficult, especially in those very steep angles that that design has. But uh, you know, I tried my best, and you know, I got I cut as close as I could to that template that I had uh, on my bandsaw. And uh, the neck pocket was probably the most the most difficult part because it had the steepest uh, angle to cut. Uh, so I, I did my best and. Sometimes you just have to roll with the way, the direction that your project is going. Uh, here I got the pick guard uh, kind of softening up those rough edges on my drum sander and it just hand uh, sanding the edges. Um, later on I'll be doing the bevel, but uh, yeah, in the meantime I'm just trying to get the shape as straight as possible. The, the edge, you know, has to be straight. Uh, you're going to be looking at it every time you pick up your guitar and play. So this sanding is definitely definitely necessary to make sure that that, that pick guard is, is as nicely shaped as possible. So I'm just going ahead and sand all the edges. So this is when the project starts going a little bit uh, awry, uh, to put it lightly. Um, here I'm just trying to get that middle uh, hole basically on the pick guard for that uh, neck pickup. Um, and I'm trying, you know, different bits to help me with this rotary tool that I'm using uh, it's probably the best way to do this um, I tried doing it on a drill press just kind of making holes and it did not work out I think the material melts uh, with the friction from the drill bit and it just kind of makes a mess and it it's just not it doesn't work for this you're probably better off using a rotary tool like I'm using here if you want to do that uh, middle uh, hole in the pick guard um, and as you can see, you know, it's just grinding away at that material until you get that cavity. And I'm just going to go over to the drum sander and start sanding off some of the excess material until I get as close to uh, the edge as I can. Um, you know, things were, I thought were going fine here. Uh, but then in a little, in a short while, when I go back and, you know, I don't think I even got this on camera. Well, when I went back and I tried uh putting it on or you know mocking it up on the guitar uh it just wasn't fitting right i think i just cut too much material off that middle uh position so you know i i ended up having to modify the pick guard to make it look more like the junior um here i'm just kind of uh sanding out or actually filing down some of those sharp edges in that hole so here it is and uh as you can see uh, that piece at the top is no longer there. I, I've hacked it off basically and just made the pickguard look like a junior pickguard. Um, and it had to do with that uh, neck pickup. It just didn't look right uh, with it encased. Uh, I made the holes way too big. So all I had to do was end up moving the pickguard a little bit more to the left and center it a little bit more on the neck position. And behold, I was able to get, get it to look okay. It's not perfect. Um, it's not completely flush like I would have liked to, but I really don't want to order another pick guard now and start from scratch. Um, I suppose I could do it if I really wanted to, but I'm not going to. Now it's just time to start installing the electronics, so we got those pots there. In order to be uh, more conservative and make less mistakes, I decided to start with the toggle switch since it was going to be the biggest uh, piece that was going to go in the, in the control cavity. Um, here I'm just taking it out and making sure that uh, everything fits correctly. I got the poker chip in there making sure that there's enough room so it doesn't look uh, you know uneven uh, and then I start making my marks here and I also start uh, taking uh, the pot uh, dials um, making sure that they fit correctly kind of mocking them up and kind of see uh, what is the best way that they can look um, it's very hard to do this part just because you can't see the bottom part and you can just imagine what the control cavity is shaped like uh, and just you're kind of just going back and forth uh, turning the body backwards to see to make sure that those uh, those pots are not going to be uh, in the way of anything 
Uh, here I just started making my first hole for the, the toggle switch. Um, it, and it was going to go in a pretty traditional place. Um, usually uh, SGs uh, have pick guards that don't really uh, interfere with, with that control. But since this layout started off as a junior layout, um, I had to kind of make sure that I, everything fit correctly and it did. Um, and here I'm just kind of putting the first major piece of the mod, which is the uh, toggle switch. And that fit perfectly in there. And uh, there I started to uh, install the, the poker chip. And that looked like it fit perfectly well. Uh, so uh, yeah, and I, I left the pots in there just so that I can see uh, the spacing, but now I'm gonna take them off and i'm going since i'm going to go ahead and drill the uh, other holes i went ahead and got a ruler and started making sure that uh, those pots were going to be uh, nice and straight with the other ones nice and even it's always very nerve-wracking when you're doing this because you know uh, very well that whatever you whatever holes you make they're, they're not you're not able to fix that i mean you could uh, go ahead and plug it back in, but you're always going to have that hole unless you go back and uh, lacquer up the, the finish. So it, it's you really have to take it slow and just double check your work. You know, I measured this at least three times before I finally got the drill and started uh, drilling this the, the holes for the, uh, the, the new pots that I was going to have since I was going to have the four control layout. Um, and even then, I was, I was not sure. I mean, I, I, I had a hard time trying to manage that. But finally, I settled on that, and the cor the spacing looked correct. They were approximately about two inches apart, uh, the two the the two other knobs. So we went ahead and started drilling holes in there. Um, and when you're drilling, you know, I like to do the reverse tap and then forward, just so I don't chip the lacquer. And my, the, the, here's where my first problem came um, the pot wasn't sitting flush so I had to take my rotary tool and kind of remove some of the material there so I could have more room for, for the pot um, and again you know I was I was expecting this because you know I was trying to make sure that the knobs had, had enough space in between them so that they would look, look about right you know um, so I went ahead and made the, uh, the other hole here I'm measuring my work for the fourth or fifth time just making sure that those holes are straight and here I start drilling the hole and uh, again reverse tapping it and then forward just so that you don't chip the lacquer and uh, and here was a major problem here because uh, the pod definitely did not fit there so I had to remove some more material from the cavity and you know there I'm just kind of trying out different bits because I, it's really giving me some trouble trying to get all that wood out of there. Um, interesting part, uh, when I was chipping away down there, I realized that it's the guitar was not completely mahogany. It's actually got like a maple back, I think, uh, because when I was uh, cutting through it, it was, it was pretty hard and, you know, it definitely, the wood looked lighter, so it's definitely maple. I'm here just prepping the pots, you know, trying to remove any anything uh, shiny off of them, making them nice and dull so that uh, they will be easier to solder on for the ground. Uh, I'm just using some 220 uh, grit paper and just making sure everything is lined up correctly. Kind of looking at my schematics, making sure that uh, I, got, I put the capacitors in the right slug. Um, a lot of prep time, a lot of, a lot of prep trying to get this uh, just right. Um, it's very easy to make mistakes. Uh, that's why you have to continuously look back at the schematic. Um, so, and I don't do this all the time, so it, it takes me a little bit of going back and forth. Here I'm just putting some flux on the slugs, getting my soldering iron ready, nice and clean. And uh, I got I have a rather thick tip uh, just because you know I want to make sure that I get enough heat on my tips for my soldering iron here I'm just uh, soldering the ground the slug that goes on the ground and then I went ahead and started putting a little bit of solder on um, all the the caps um, for the ground uh, I decided to do kind of like the daisy chain of, 
of chaining uh, one wire from one pot to another uh, so that they all share the same ground. So I'm just kind of stripping little pieces of shi uh, shielding off so that I can have enough uh, wire to solder onto the to one pot and after the other. Um, this makes it a lot cleaner, but to tell you the truth, you have to be very careful because if you uh, make those wires too short, uh, it'll be kind of difficult to reinstall into the cavity. So just make sure that you give enough uh, give to each wire, that way you have a little bit of flexibility. So, you know, here I'm just kind of daisy chaining each one, making sure that the soldering is solid. <clears throat> just use a razor to take some of that shielding off. I think wiring up a guitar is probably one of my favorite parts, uh, just because I feel like this is like the last step, uh, whether you're refinishing a guitar or building one from scratch. Uh, wiring it up kind of gives it life so this is probably one of my favorite parts to do um, and uh, so there goes the complete ground circuit for all the pots and that looks pretty solid I'm just kind of making a, an adjustment so that looks pretty good so the next step is uh, installing the the orange drop capacitor these are uh, 250k pots um, I just decided to go all around 250k um, being that these are single coil so and uh, I will momentarily put up the schematic that I'm following I got this one from Stumac I think this might be 50s wiring but I'm not sure uh, which is fitting because uh, I don't plan to use a lot of distortion with this guitar um, especially where that uh, neck pickup is positioned that I don't think you're gonna get a lot of that but um here I'm just installing the two capacitors and I'm installing uh, one orange straw from one pot to another instead of just grounding it down to the tone pot and you know I had to take the washers off just to adjust the cap since it's kind of a, a big capacitor so I'm just cutting off one of the leads and reinserting them to do my additional wiring. Well, that looks pretty good. So at this point, unfortunately, my camera died. So I wasn't able to record the rest of the soldering. Uh, but here it is. Um, I think everything worked out perfectly well. Everything fit well. Uh, made sure that all my soldering was solid. Uh, I'm not a professional solderer, but... Uh, I think it looks okay you know I don't see any cold solders there um, I tested it out on my little amp uh, and everything the, the neck pickup and the bridge pickup were working perfectly fine and the tone pots uh, they sounded like they were working so I'm pretty confident that it's all gonna work out and that uh, the layout is uh, gonna work well this is the front of the guitar good look at the controls I went back with my razor and I kind of rebebbled a little bit of the pick guard, making sure that uh, that the binding would show a little bit more. Uh, don't pay any attention to my camera. I think my lens was, you know, concave somehow at the bottom, uh, and uh, it looked the neck looks crooked, but it's not really crooked. I think it's just the camera angle. But um, here I'm just kind of adjusting the height. Of the bridge I'm trying to make sure that I get the right right kind of action by adjusting the bridge um, it's you know the juniors always had that wraparound bridge so you have to kind of just play with that and try to get the best intonation possible um, here I'm just kind of throwing on the strings and making sure that uh, everything is installed correctly and making sure that the bridge uh, strings uh, line up and uh, yeah, just doing some fine tuning here. Making sure that everything looks right. And uh, I was really impressed by that new uh, neck pickup that we're gonna hear in momentarily. Um, it sounded great. Um, 
it's it's a lot uh i think it has like a little bit of a higher output than the bridge pickup or maybe it's just the position i'm not sure but i really love that sound and uh before we do that let's go ahead and take a, one last look at the guitar and i'm pretty satisfied with the job that that was done here um you know the guitar looks you know i wouldn't say stock but it definitely looks good better than i expected uh, being that this is a junior and it's not supposed to have that middle that neck pickup but the layout looks pretty good it, it, i basically converted this to a special now um with two p90 so uh, i'm kind of excited about that we're gonna go ahead and take it out to the front and uh we'll listen to some sounds Here are my final thoughts. Do I regret this project? Absolutely not. Um, I think there was something to be learned here uh, from the way that these guitars are built and, you know, obviously uh, challenging oneself to kind of try something different. Um, before I did this video, I actually got online and tried to see if anyone had done this project. And I looked uh, a few places. Uh, Tom Woodford uh, did do something similar to the to my project. He did a uh, you know the arm and pickup on in the neck, and uh, you know from that I I knew that I had this guitar and I just wanted to see if I could do it. Um, would I do it again? Probably not, just because I know that you could probably purchase uh, an SG Special with P90s already included. You can just do the soap bar upgrades if you wanted to. Um, so I don't really feel the need to f try to find, you know, SG Juniors and try to do this modification over and over again. I think this was just an experiment to see if it worked. Um, I was very content with the sound that, it, you know, it, it made. It's not quite a neck position, but it's, you know, it's, you know, a little bit uh, higher, uh, you know, a little bit more trebly or lead, I guess. Like, but, um, you know, I enjoyed uh, doing this and doing this project and, I hope it's helpful for those who want to try it. I mean, I know that there's other guitars that come with one pickup, and maybe you're not happy with just having one pickup. You want to have, you know, the either the neck or the bridge position available to you and additional controls. And, you know, I hope that vid this video is helpful for that. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you for joining me today. It's been kind of a long project for me, but I was happy to do it and happy to, to be able to show it on my channel. Have a, have a wonderful uh, rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video. Take